Hello everyone and welcome to the first part of a video series I'm creating to take you through the process of creating a segmented vase, similar to these ones here. In the first half of this video we'll be looking at designing a segmented vase using a piece of paper and blocklayer.com. In the second half of this video I'll be showing you how to create a segmented vase using the Segment Pro computer software. Let's get started. The first step is to grab a pencil and we want to draw a rough cross section of the vase we want to make on the piece of paper. That's quite nice, I think I'll go with that. So if you imagine this as half of the vase with this as a center point through the middle, that's what it will look like once it's mirrored over. This should also be one-to-one -one scale, so however tall this is is how tall your vase will be in real life. So this is about 13 centimeters tall, so my finished vase will be 13 centimeters tall. I think I want to have a layer every 1.5 centimeters all the way up to the top. And then I want to do it again, but just a bit further across. And the goal here is to get parallel lines going all the way across the vase the same height as your segmented rings will be. Next we want to connect each of these lines with a ruler. So once you've got your plan drawn on paper, it should look something similar to that. The next step is to draw the inside of the vase so it will have a cross section. This is the, going to be the finished thickness. Considering this is not a very big vase, you probably only want to make it about a centimeter wide. Oh, so here we have something that looks a bit like that and you can see a cross section here of the, the vase that you're planning to make. I'm going to change this top bit here to be a bit taller. So the top of the vase is a full segmented ring. The next step to this project is to look at the thickness here. Let's take this ring here as an example. We want to draw a line at 90 degrees to the parallel lines from the furthest point to the left of the section of the segmented ring. And then you want to do the same, but on the right. You should have here is a rectangle, which encompasses all of that section of the segmented vase. You then want to continue doing this all the way up. And this bottom ring will be a full block, so we don't have to worry about that one. If we remove the cross section of the vase, you can start to see we've got something that looks a bit like a segmented blank. The next step is we want to measure from the center point of the vase to the outermost point of the segment. So this is 2.9. This one is 3.4. So I'll just do this all the way up. This number is in centimeters, the radius of each segmented ring. The next step is to go onto block layer and input these into the segmented turning calculator. Now we're here on blocklayer.com. I'll put a link in the top of the description to where you can get here yourself. So once we're here, we'll scroll down and we're looking for segmented turning calculator. So here it is. Um, so we just click on it and it will take us to this page. And currently it's in inches, but I drew my plan in centimeters. So I'm gonna go up here and I'm just gonna click on wood turning segment. So once I'm here, we've got all of the inputs. Then we've got what our segmented ring will look like. And then we've also got sliders, which will change all of these things up here on the left. What we want to do is we want to change the segments to the amount of segments we'd like. So I'd like 24 segments. And then we click calculate. And that will appear here. So once I put in the amount of segments, what I'm going to do is come here to the radius. 
and the only drawback to using this program is you can't make small segmented rings with it. So what we're going to have to do is times whatever we had on our sheet of paper by 10 and then input into here and then whatever this number is which is the segment edge length divide that by 10. We will get the outside edge of the segment that we need to cut to make our segmented ring. So the bottom ring on my segmented vase was 2.9 centimeters. So what I'm going to do is put in 290 millimeters and click calculate. So this is 10 times what the measurement is, but it will only let you do values above 50. So I can't put 29 in, but what we've got here is 76.4. And if we just move the decimal place over, so we've got 7.64. That's my segment edge length for the bottom ring. So I'm just going to write that on my piece of paper and then I'm going to repeat this process for the rest of them. So as you can see here, we've got the original measurement of the radius of each ring here. And then on the right, I've written the segment edge length, which is the outside of each segment. The piece of wood that we're cutting the segments from should be the same width as the two pieces around each segment. So for this segment, it's 1.4 centimeters. So the first measurement of our piece of wood should be 1.4 centimeters. The thickness of each ring is 1.5 centimeters, but these rings are going to need to be sanded down. And just so we've got enough to work with, I'm going to do mine a little extra. So I'm going to do mine two centimeters tall. The measurement of the piece of wood I need for the first segmented ring to cut the segments from is 1.4 centimeters by two centimeters. I can then repeat this process with all of the other rings. We need to make sure to remember how many segments are in each ring so we cut the right angle on the saw. So I've got 24 segments per ring, so I'm just going to write that down so I don't forget. The way we calculate the correct angle for the segmented ring is 360 divided by the amount of segments you want. In my case, I've got 24 segments in each ring. So I divide 360 by 24 and that gives me 15. And because each segment has two sides, I need to divide that by two and that will give me 7.5. So the angle I need to set my saw to is 7.5 degrees. So after you've launched Segment Pro, you'll see a few things here up at the top. So you've got bowl view, profiles, plans, summary, rings, species, palettes, and categories. If you go to the profiles one, it will show you a long list of lots of pre-designed vases and bowls that you can select from to, as a base for your bowl of vase. So today we're going to make a vase. I want to choose a form. So I'm going to go with this one. And I, so I click open profile and it shows me this vase in the 3D view mode. So I can then look around and see what it looks like. You also notice here on the left, you have a line. This is a cross section of the side of the vase. So you can move these sliders in and out and it will adjust so that you can have that form inside of the segmented blank. Down here on the bottom left, it shows you how tall the vase will be. Also the maximum diameter, the total amount of segments in the whole thing, the amount of segmented rings and the volume it will have after turning. You also see a cutaway view here of the vase. Down here at the bottom, we've got the amount of segments per ring. We've also got the thickness of each ring and the wall width. These three are really the only three that we need to worry about. And adjusting this will decide how many rings you can have in the height of your vase and the wall width, which is how thick the wall of your vase will be once you finish turning it. Up here on the top left, you can change the final height to be whatever you like. So I'm going to go with 13 centimeters, which is 130 millimeters. And that will give me a final height from bottom to top of 13 centimeters. So currently this has a couple too many rings in it. So I'm going to change the layer thickness to 15 millimeters. And what this will do is it will change the layer thickness to be thicker and it will keep the same height. It will result in fewer rings being in the overall piece. I'm also going to change the amount of segments that I have here. I think to 24 should be good. I'm also going to change the vase shape to be a bit narrower because it's quite wide at the moment and that'll be difficult to turn when I go to the widest part. There we go, so I quite like that, so I think we're gonna go with this one. The last thing is the wall width down here. So this is how thick the wall is. So 10 millimeters is not a lot, although 
you might want your final wall thickness to be 10 millimeters. That isn't enough leeway. If you accidentally glue one of the rings on slightly off center, then you won't have enough material to make it the right thickness. So I'm gonna change this up to about 15. With a vase this small, it's not so important because one centimeter wall thick is probably fine because I can go thinner than that and it won't be an issue. Whereas with bigger vases and bowls and stuff, you've got to be careful that the wall thickness isn't too thin. So once I've done that, I'm gonna go up here to summary. After you click on summary, it will bring you to this page and you'll have all of the information you need to make your segmented vase. So you, here we have the board size that you need to cut the segments from. So the width for the second ring is 22 millimeters. The width for the th third ring is 16 millimeters. The width for the fourth is 15, etc. all the way down to the last ring. There's nine segmented rings in this vase and then one solid piece for the base. This measurement here is the length of wood you will need for each segmented ring and this is very this is the important one this is how wide the outside edge of your segment will be this is the thickness so 15 millimeters per ring and this is the amount of segments in each ring so 24. if i click print i can have it as a physical paper copy or i can click export and send it to my phone or my computer to look at while i'm making the segmented vase